For today's video, I'm finally going to take advantage of the free wood that I was given about a year ago from Bowman Mills up in Vinings, North Carolina. So that was very generous and it's great. This stuff ends up looking really good. I just let it sit for way too long so it ended up twisting on me. So the first step, taking it over to the planer, this is going to get rid of the rough edges on the top and bottom. It's not going to get rid of any of the warping, so if that's your goal, don't use a planer for that because it's not going to solve the purpose. All the planer is going to do is push down and then kind of shave accordingly, but it's not going to straighten any boards. So here you can see the before and after what it looks like going into the planer and then coming out. You can still see the kind of cupping on the bottom of the board. And here, this is a really good visual of what that twisting and warped board looks like. Anyway, the wood was free, so I'm going to move ahead and not worry about it. First time using my saw stop table saw, and I loved it. It just cut through this like it was nothing. So the miter saw is too short, so you can see when I go to flip this board over, this dry wood actually so dry that the piece we cut literally just broke off. So anyway, I need to make me a cross cut, cross cut sled on the table saw for future cuts. And here there's a big crack that did show up so we decided to get it glued and clamped and I'm not going to rely just on that. What I'm going to do is make some bow ties. So here taking that scrap that broke off of the wood earlier that you saw and since it's the same type of wood I'll use it for my bow ties. So what we're doing, I'll draw three lines, one at the bottom, one at the top, one at the middle and those are kind of reference points and then just measure out the size of the bow tie that you want and then just connect the lines from there. So once I get them I just mark out in pencil the portions I'm going to keep and you're either going to sand it or cut off excess so don't worry about any pencil lines you have on here. Then take them over to the bandsaw, cut out the actual shape. Again you can make these as creative as you want. Some people do butterflies, like literal butterflies or some other design diamonds. But I'm going to illustrate a couple of things. Here I'm using a rasp to show you one option, which I don't like it. The version I have is too rough, so it causes kick out and splinters like this. So I don't like the rasp. My preferred choice for these, again, I'm not showing you the final version, but I like using this file that I have. So it's the one that I can control the most and it has the least amount of negative consequences associated with it. Another option you can do is use a small hand plane. So I have this one that I'm, I haven't used often at all. So I'm going to just show you what it looks like to use it. And again, I don't like it. It kind of did just like the other. And here in my chisel, I feel like I'm doing one of those infomercials of showing you how sloppy somebody can be to exaggerate something. But I don't like using a chisel. This is purely for illustration purposes. But anyway, once you get them, the dimensions that you want where they're relatively smooth trace it onto the board over the crack so it's kind of centered and you do want the grain of your bow tie to go against the grain of the board which I should listen to myself because I did not do that on a couple of these and hopefully they hold up and stand the test of time but we'll find out so once you get them rough cut with the router take a chisel get rid of any of the kind of rounded edges, any of the kind of grooves that you left and go into the second depth. And then I like to round over just a little bit so that way when I handle, or excuse me, hammer it down, when I get it glued up, it'll go right in there. You don't want to hammer too hard. If you don't measure correctly, you will end up splintering your bow tie and having to start over with a new one. So I like to just cut them loose after the fact. I also like when my camera stays on the table, doesn't fall. But you could also take a hand plane to fine tune it or just sand it down if you want to go the sanding route, whichever way you want to go. And then I filled the cracks with sawdust and wood glue off camera. I'm not filming at this point. That's <laughs> my standing photographer. The wobbling was a bit much, which it still is, so I don't recommend using boards that are that wobbly, but I put the time in to put the bow ties in there so much right. And yesterday when I was doing it, 
hammering in the uh, bow ties, this piece and another little piece over here just completely broke off. So that's what these clamps are. There. Let's see. Let's see, there was a big, little thin patch at least. So that's why I just glued it back and then this one was a lot, a lot bigger. So who knows what will happen. But again, this is all just testing things out and trying some different stuff. So I will not put this back through the planer. I don't trust it to not kick all this piece apart. So we'll get a 80 grit sandpaper or something more aggressive and get rid of the big chunks and then fine tune the sanding after that. So I took the pieces outside to sand and this was purely just to show you that I did that. Not going to belabor the issue. You guys have seen sanding before. So the backer board I'm using is a quarter inch piece of birch plywood. So here I set my fence to one quarter inch measurement and one quarter, one quarter of an inch high and then ran the four sides of the shelf through it. So be sure don't stand behind the piece that you're cutting. This is a really easy example that I used intentionally. So you'll see these two little slivers kick back, but you figure if you're doing a big piece of wood and it's going to kick back and it's something meaningful or really sharp, that could cause a little bit of pain to you. So just pay attention. Right, so the inside of our board is almost 44 inches. We'll just make the math easy. So if we want three shelves, we'll add one. So that's four and that's the spacing you want to use for each shelf. So we have 11, 22, 33, where your three shelves are, and that'll be evenly spaced. So with the adjustments, we'll drill basically close to the nine and a half, the 11, and the 12-ish here, and then do the same thing at 22 and 33, which gives you the flexibility to move the shelves to different heights as wanted, as needed. So that's what we're gonna do now. What did I do? This is all, oh, son of a gun. Shoot. Do you want me to stop recording? No. That was dumb. I hate it when I do that. Oh, I hate it when I do that. All right, this did not go well. So it's really twisted at this point. And then when we glued and screwed the edges, we didn't make sure that it was square. So we have a 
looking at let's see inside 19 and three quarters a little over 19 and three quarters and then we get down here and a little bit more so actually somehow <laughs> it has managed to hit itself a little bit closer so just leaving it alone for a few hours this morning it's actually gone from 19 and a quarter to 19 and a half i don't know what i've done i did try an iron trick where you put a wet towel on there and iron it to try and get it to move so maybe that worked but nonetheless i'm going to measure up some plywood to put inside this groove as a backer and I will not glue that so that way it has plenty of room to be flexible and see what happens. I'm cutting down this quarter inch plywood on the saw stop. It's, it was, there was zero resistance that flew through there so nice and smooth. It was awesome. So I definitely not regretting that purchase and some quality scrap to hang on to for the next one. don't have it square what will happen is you get it cut you cut your straight line but I marked it so that I would be able to see so this part I'll just have to either use the hand plane or sandpaper and get that down so it'll all go in flush here and we'll be good to go it's like a coffin I still am not good at the hand plane operation yet. I don't know if it's user error or blades a little dull. It's more to be done. So now that this is seated in here, I'm going to cut this and leave little boards here that kind of hold this in place. So I'm not going to glue it that way. It'll have room to expand and if this decides to twist anymore, it won't mess this up. So this will be a floating backer and then these will just hold it in place so it doesn't fall out. Here I left all of the cuts in entirely just because I like the time lapse of speeding up the footage whenever I use this coping saw. Well, that's what they look like. Whether or not they last, I'm not sure. So there's plenty of movement for this to go wherever it wants to go. I'm going to give a squeeze up. But, nonetheless, it's an experiment and we shall see how it works in the long run. Not sure how well it will show up on cam, but I should not have clamped directly to the wood. You're supposed to put wood then clamp it and I didn't pay attention so I kind of messed myself up and now I've got to spend more time sanding to fix the mistake. So again, learning as I go. Lessons learned there Thomas. For the finish on this one we went with boiled linseed oil and it took a ton. This wood was so dry that we used at least a quarter of the can and it turned out really well. I like the way it looks. It's just a matter of it, it took two coats for sure. It soaked up a bunch of this stuff. So here you can see the light darkening of it as it got put on there. So this bottom board, once I scan it a little closer, you'll see you can tell it was cut from the same piece as the base of the shelf. So there's that pink tint to it and then it's got the white sapwood in front but I really like it there's a whole lot of character to each of the boards on all sides and the shelves and everything in here mm -hmm. so I, all I used was boiled linseed oil I didn't put any furniture wax or anything else on top of it but I like all this character and that's the wrong way to do a bow tie that's the right way
even left a big crack in there on the side. So I hope you guys liked it and a few different changes in the way I handled the video today, but appreciate you watching.